Some while back, I saw an article written by Amanda Gassay on Instructables.com explaining how you can build a waveform generator using an Arduino. It featured a surprisingly simple contraption called a resistor letter DAC, or with other words, a digital to analog converter using only resistors. The USD DAC provides 8 bits or 256 steps between zero and maximum voltage. The generator is a great idea and I just had to build one. I made a resistor DAC, downloaded the code from the Instructables website and uploaded it to my Arduino. It worked, sort of, but I quickly spotted some flaws of the original design. The frequency couldn't be set precisely to any value and the smallest frequency possible was about 5 Hz I think. There's also no way to find out the current frequency as there is no display or anything and you cannot hear the sound without something hooked up to it. This gave me some ideas. I could use a different way to set the frequency, for example using more pots. I could modify these pots so that I can set them precisely to a number. I could use a display that can show the frequency, and I could add some other functions as well. I guess everything went a bit out of hand from here, but while it is worth doing, it is worth overdoing. This is what I came up with. My generator is Arduino driven like the original. These two pot knobs here are used to set the waveform, the sound mode and the decimal for the frequency. This knob here sets a number between 0 and 9 and is used for the frequency together with that one. The knobs left have little plastic springs so that they stay locked at their positions and go click click when I spin them. I have designed these knobs and springs using FreeCAD and then 3D printed them. The third knob has no spring because some modes work better without. The right two knobs are for speaker volume and line volume. The case is made from cheap plywood. I designed it with Inkscape and the plug-in box maker and then cut it out with a CNC router. There's a headphone jack as amplified output and also a speaker in the top of the device that plays the current sound. I can set the waveform between sine wave, sawtooth, triangle and different flavors of square wave. I can set any frequency between 1Hz and 30kHz. I do that by setting values for thousands, hundreds, tens and so on after each other. I am setting the device to 978Hz here as a demonstration. The accuracy is pretty much bang on at any frequency, at least according to my oscilloscope. Even in higher frequencies, it is off by only a fraction of a percent. The generator can also do musical notes of three octaves, and there are two sweep modes, where the knob here controls the frequency directly. The switch here connects the output of my DIC directly to the headphone jack. For the case I need a clean, unamplified signal. These are different waveforms at 800Hz as a demonstration and you can see how sharp the signal is. In comparison, the amplified output is more distorted because of the filter caps at the amps input and output, especially visible with the square wave. A display shows the current frequency. This display is actually quite of a stupid hack itself because I used the guts of a cheap calculator for it. You can see in my previous video how I have done that. The electronics is basically the same as in the original. The Arduino, a cheap amplifier from some crappy PC speakers and a 9V battery. The software is very similar to the original as well. I also use the Arduino timer interrupt as main clock, but it is not set to 100 kHz but to 65,536 Hz to make some calculations easier. 
Like the original, I have pre-stored the sine wave. I have stored 60,384 byte values. It is actually interesting how the different frequencies are made from that wave and where the problems are. Let me draw some stuff for that. Let's say these are my 16,384 samples of one sine wave in the 8-bit range that the DAC can deliver. Now, my sampling rate is 4 times that number. When in every circle the next value in my array is used, that would create a tone of 4 Hz. When every second value is used, I would get 8 Hz, with every third value 12 Hz and so on. Getting a frequency in between these increments is difficult, because we cannot get the 2.5 value from the array. Instead, we need to calculate exactly how long the old value is valid and when the next value is needed. For that calculation, I need division and floating point numbers. They are available for the Arduino, but they are pretty slow. And so, I use division's little brother, bit shift operations. I multiply the position value in my sine wave with 4 by bit shifting it by 2 to the left. With that kind of blown up number, I can now calculate the new position with 1 Hz precision. The maximum blown up position is 65,536. This is handy because I don't need to check whether it exceeds the border, as I can just let overflow the integral variable back to zero. I still need to map the value back to the actual sine wave, of course. For that, I bit shift the position result 2 to the right. I use similar calculation tricks for the other waveforms. For the sawtooth and square wave, I need to map the number to a range between 0 and 265, which I do by bit shifting it by 8. For the triangle wave, I bit shift by 7 because I need values between 0 and 512. Each time the frequency is changed, the program calculates the values to skip in the blown up number, and in each cycle, so many values are skipped, and depending on the waveform, the actual output is calculated and sent to the 8 ports, where the DAC is connected. The display is quite slow as described in my last video. I wanted to have the sound generator stay responsive even while the number is updating. And so, the control routine here is written in a way that it updates only a bit every time the command is called in the main loop, so that the generator can stay responsive. Multitasking on an Arduino, basically. However, the LCD is actually still slowing down the generator a bit, because it basically steals some cycles every time to update itself. I gave my generator a switch for that reason, that switches off the LCD. I can create very low frequencies in high precision, as I demonstrate here with different flavors of a 1Hz wave. I can use the square wave output to test servos, but I have none here to demonstrate. I can also connect the generator to a stepper motor driver to test it. Each peak makes the motor go one step. You can find the software and the schematics on my Hackaday page. You can also find a stripped down version of the software that only creates a 440Hz sine wave. You can use this program to test a resistor lighter DAC on a naked Arduino with no pods or anything attached. Making this box was fun, but more effort than I thought. Well, here it is, being useful, hopefully. See you next time.